this video, I show you how you can balance flash and low levels of ambient light in the second part of the Red Riding Hood themed shoot. Autorama TV presents Take and Make Great Photography with Gavin Hoey. Hello, I'm Gavin Hoey and you're watching Adorama TV, brought to you by Adorama, the camera store that has everything for us photographers. And today, well, you can see I'm not actually in my little studio. We're out in the woods because we're going to do a Red Riding Hood themed shoot, but outdoors. Now to do this, of course, I need a model. So let me introduce you to Fern. Say hello, Fern. Hey. So Fern's joined me again, very brave in this lovely warm. It's lovely out here, isn't it? <laughs> the UK is always lovely and sunny and uh, we're going to do a little shoot out here. We're going to mix in a bit of flash as well, so it's going to be an extension of our previous studio shoot. So with that in mind, let's get going. So for the first setup, we're going to do something fairly straightforward, a nice kind of head and shoulder shot out here. And uh, I've got some flash gear that I'm going to use, but let's start without flash and just see what we get. Now the lighting today can best be described as flat, but let's take a shot. Now I'm going to use my Canon 70 to 200 millimeter f 2.8 lens, gorgeous lens for portraits and give some lovely creamy blurry backgrounds, especially when you shoot wide open at f 2.8. Now I've got to watch my, my shutter speed here. I've got nothing other than the, the camera and the lens, no extra lighting and at 100 ISO my shutter speed is very, very slow, even wide open at f 2.8. So let's really bump up that ISO setting and we can go up to 400 ISO, keep my shutter speed up and my pictures sharper. That's great. So they work pretty well, but they are very flat and lack a little bit of drama. And that's where lighting can come in. We can add our own lighting into this scene to create our own rather more dramatic image. So for the lighting, I'm going to use the, the Rove Light 600. This is a studio powered flash. I mean, it's a, a very powerful flash, but the best bit about it is it's battery powered. So there's no cables. There's nothing here that uh, is going to cause me to have any problems even shooting in the woods. We just need to get this in the right position. And of course, I need the little remote control to go on top of the camera to trigger the Rove Light. Okay, so let's work out what we need to do for exposure. Now, I'm going to start by taking an ambient meter reading. So I'm in aperture priority mode. I'm in my chosen aperture, f2.8, and I'm going to drop down to ISO 100. That's where I want to be. Now, if I take my ambient meter reading from here, my camera is telling me, wow, it's telling me a tenth of a second. That's how dark it is down here. And it's the middle of the afternoon. It's crazy dark, uh, but we can work with that. So that's a tenth of a second. Now I'm actually going to switch to manual and I'm going to deliberately underexpose the ambient light. So tenth of a second f2.8 ISO 100 is the correct exposure. I'm going to go for a thirtieth of a second. So that's a stop and a bit underexposed. Let's just take a shot without the flash firing so you can see how that looks. As you can see, it's a little underexposed, but we still have detail in the background. Now we're going to add in the flash, but we need to work out how bright to make that flash. Remember, my target aperture is f2.8. So let's turn the flash meter on. So all I'm going to do is just pop the, the meter underneath Fern's chin or thereabouts, and we'll take a meter reading. So at the moment, that's telling me f5.6. That's way too bright. I just need to turn this down two stops, that's six clicks. And then I can take another meter reading and that's telling me f2.8. So I've hit my target aperture for my flash. My flash is producing f2.8 of light. It's gonna balance with the ambient and hopefully that will just fill in the shadows and give me the shot I'm after. Okay, let's take the shot and find out. Okay, Fern, here we go. So that's lovely, brilliant. And can you bring your hood up over your head for me? Okay, there we go. Okay, so there we go, we've got some great shots. And that shows you that by balancing the ambient light and the flash, you can get some great shots that give you the best of both, but give you ultimate control over the end result. Okay, so let's try something different. Let's move on, try another location. 
So we've moved to a, another location. We've got very different lighting here than inside of the woods. And I'm going to do a very slightly different way of working because the lighting here is bright enough that I might find that my shutter speed goes to my maximum sync speed of this camera, which is one two hundredth of a second. So I'm going to jump into TV or shutter priority mode here on my Canon. My, my sync speed is 200th of a second, but I always work a little below that. So one 160th of a second. And I'm just going to take a meter reading and let the camera tell me what aperture I can work at. And my camera is telling me F 2.8. Now 160th ISO 100 F 2.8 would give me a perfect exposure on the background. I want to slightly underexpose, so I'm going to shoot at F 4 instead. OK, so switch to manual, one 160th of a second, F4, ISO 100. That's locked in. Now what I need to do is to, to get the flash to flash at F4, so fern becomes correctly exposed and my background is slightly underexposed. We'll come and take a test reading, pointing the meter reading back at the flash. OK, I'm actually on F5, so we can just drop that down just a little bit to F4. So my flash is producing exactly the right amount of light and I should get the shot that I'm after. Beautiful. These are lovely. Really good. Yeah, these are fantastic shots, they really are. Okay, uh, can I get you just to do a little spin? See how that comes out. Okay, go for it. And yay, there you go. So we've moved around and we're going to do a different shot. Now we're going to do a wide shot. So I've switched out to my 24 to 105 millimeter lens and I've changed the position of the light. We've now got it going much higher in the air to give a very different lighting look. I need to take an ambient meter reading first of all. So I'm going to go for the wide angle end of my lens to try and get a, a nice ambient feeling. And I'm going to choose where well, we might have to go up a bit on the ISO. Let's just have a little go here. ISO 100 at the moment, uh, F4, and that gives me an ambient reading. And it's still about a tenth of a second, so it's not as bad as it looks. So a tenth of a second is my ambient. I'm going to switch to manual. And if I had a tenth of a second at F4, well, that would be correctly exposed. And all of this would be correctly and and nice and bright. But to make it a little bit more nighttimey, I'm going to go from a tenth of a second to a twentieth of a second. That's one stop. A twentieth of a second to a fortieth of a second. That's two stops. And from a fortieth, well, we're going to go to a sixtieth. So that's two and a half stops underexposed ambient light. So my target aperture is f4. Let's pop the little trigger back on. We need to make sure the flash produces f4 light that hits fern. So let's just get the flash meter and we'll take a meter reading. Here we go. So pop it underneath the chin and it's currently telling me f5.6. So that's a stop of light too much. We can just drop this down one stop, take a meter reading and I'm getting f4. And in theory, all I have to do is press the button. That's the easy bit. Okay, let's take some shots and find out. Are you ready? Beautiful. That's really good. I'm just going to think about the background when I'm taking these shots. Just try and get a nice shot, a nice background. Really good. So there you go. By combining the, the ambient light, the flash, changing your lens and changing your position, you can create a whole raft of different pictures. Now, all I need to do is to get my favorite picture into Photoshop and do a little bit of processing. And we're going to do that right now. Don't forget to check out Adorama's latest contest and your chance to win amazing prizes. It's great to be back in the warm. It was freezing out there and everybody who worked on that shoot did a brilliant job to disguise that fact. One thing I can't disguise, however, is the lighting on the shots and I worked hard to try and get the lighting how I wanted it. Nonetheless, there's always a little bit of room for improvement inside of Photoshop. So let's see what we can do. So this is the shot from the very last setup we did. And although it's fine, I've got the exposure the way I want it, I'd like just a little bit more light round by Fern's feet. Now to do it, I'm going to use one of the, the features here inside of Camera Raw. It's called the Radial Filter. 
Now with the radial filter, I can apply all sorts of things. Let's just change the exposure for now. And I'm gonna add one and a half stops of exposure. I just drag out a little circle like so. I can move that around and I can pop it anywhere I want. It's worth noting that I've got my circle set so it's on the inside setting, otherwise it would have the opposite effect. I reckon we can go a little bit brighter than that, maybe up to about two stops. If I go too bright, it starts to affect Fern's dress and we lose detail there. So I might need to balance up the exposure and the highlights just to bring some of that back as well. Okay, I'm happy with that. Let's click the OK button. And that gives me that little splash of light round by her feet. If I had a second light, I might've been able to add that in a lot easier in camera. But one thing that would have been very hard to add would be some rays of light, because I want to show that the light's coming in from the side, and if we'd had a, a smoke machine, we might've been able to do that. We didn't, so we couldn't. So I'm gonna do it in Photoshop. Now to do it, first of all, I'm gonna make a brand new empty layer. So let's go up to Layer, New, and Layer. Now my rays of light are gonna be a paintbrush, and the brush I'm gonna use, I'm actually needing to download first of all, and fortunately I know exactly where it is because it's on my website. So it's a free paintbrush. If you go to my website, gavtrain.com, search for ray of light brushes, you can download them for free. And then all you need to do is go back to Photoshop, unzip the uh, paintbrushes, so here they are unzipped, and I'll install them into Photoshop by dragging them and dropping them, not on the picture, but on the, the bar along the top where I've got all of the titles 